1. What is the primary function of a data center's cooling system? A. To reduce humidity in the environment. B. To maintain consistent operating temperatures for equipment. C. To ensure the building is energy efficient. D. To prevent dust accumulation on equipment. 2. Which of the following is a critical component of data center security? A. HVAC systems. B. Physical access controls. C. Floor tiles. D. Lighting systems. 3. Which standard is widely used for data center design and operational best practices? A. ISO 9001. B. ITIL. C. ANSI. TIA 942. D. SOC 2. 4. How can a data center's energy efficiency be improved? A. By increasing the number of servers. B. By optimizing cooling and airflow management. C. By extending operating hours. D. By reducing the number of employees. 5. What is the purpose of redundancy in a data center? A. To increase energy consumption. B. To provide backup in case of system failure. C. To enhance cooling efficiency. D. To increase operational costs. 6. Which of the following is essential in a disaster recovery plan for a data center? A. Immediate implementation of new hardware. B. Off-site backups and redundant systems. C. Limiting server access. D. Daily updates to the operating system. 7. What is the main advantage of virtualization in data centers? A. Reduces hardware costs by allowing multiple virtual machines on a single physical server. B. Increases the number of physical servers needed. C. Enhances cooling systems. D. Limits access to data and equipment. 8. Which of the following regulations is most relevant to data privacy in data centers? A. HIPAA. B. OSHA. C. PCI DSS. D. SOC 2. 9. What is the best method for monitoring data center performance? A. Weekly manual inspections. B. Automated monitoring tools with real-time analytics. C. Monthly audits by third-party agencies. D. On-demand reports from management. 10. Which of the following is the most important factor in data center site selection? A. Proximity to employees. B. Cost of land. C. Availability of cooling resources and power supply. D. Availability of retail options nearby. 11. What does Tier 3 classification in data center design signify? A. Basic infrastructure with minimal redundancy. B. Redundant systems and a single path for power and cooling. C. Fully redundant systems with multiple paths for power and cooling. D. Facilities for natural disaster protection only. 12. What is the purpose of an uninterruptible power supply, UPS, in a data center? A. To prevent cooling system failures. B. To provide backup power during outages. C. To monitor energy efficiency. D. To secure physical access to servers. 13. In a data center, what does PUE, power usage effectiveness, measure? A. The ratio of usable power to total power consumed. B. The efficiency of the server cooling system. C. The effectiveness of power supply during downtime. D. The amount of energy consumed by non-IT equipment. 14. What is the role of a data center manager? A. To design new data center equipment. B. To manage daily operations and ensure efficient functioning of the data center. C. To develop marketing strategies for the data center. D to maintain relationships with external customers only. 15. Which of the following is the key objective of data center capacity planning? A. Maximizing server usage. B. Ensuring sufficient resources to meet growing demands. C. Reducing operational expenses. D. Improving cooling systems. 16. Which of the following is not a commonly used data center cooling method? A. Raised floor cooling. B. Liquid cooling. C. Free cooling using ambient air. D. Solar panel cooling. 17. In terms of data center design, what is cold aisle containment? 
A. A method of isolating the hot air generated by servers to improve cooling efficiency. B. A strategy for reducing electrical usage. C. A backup solution in case of server failure. D. A system for storing backup data off-site. 18. What type of data center layout is most effective in reducing energy consumption? A. Hot aisle, cold aisle configuration. B. Single no server arrangement. C. Mixed use floor layout. D. Open floor plan with no physical partitions. 19. Which of the following is true about cloud computing in data centers? A. It eliminates the need for physical data centers. B. It reduces the requirement for disaster recovery plans. C. It allows for dynamic scaling and resource allocation. D. It requires a higher upfront investment compared to traditional data centers. 20. What is the primary purpose of compliance audits in a data center? A. To evaluate the performance of IT systems. B. To assess security and regulatory adherence. C. To optimize server configuration. D. To improve data storage capacity. 21. How does a data center achieve high availability? A. By relying on a single power source. B. By having redundant hardware and network connections. C. By keeping the facility in a single location. D. By limiting the number of connected devices. 22. Which of the following best defines a data center infrastructure management DCIM, system? A. A tool for managing inventory of physical equipment. B. A system for automating employee tasks. C. A software for monitoring and managing the entire data center infrastructure. D. A backup solution for data storage. 23. What should be prioritized during the design of a data center's physical security? A. HVAC systems. B. Fire suppression systems. C. Limiting unauthorized access and surveillance. D. Optimizing energy efficiency. 24. How should data center personnel be trained to handle emergency situations? A. Through on-the-job learning only. B. By attending external seminars. C. Through structured training programs and drills. D. By relying on experience alone. 25. What is a key consideration when planning a data center's disaster recovery site? A. Proximity to the primary data center. B. The aesthetics of the recovery site. C. Availability of customer support services. D. Cost of land and construction. 26. Which technology enables data centers to quickly scale operations during periods of high demand? A. Virtualization. B. Increased server space. C. Redundant power supplies. D. Static routing. 27. Which of the following is a key responsibility of data center operations teams? A. Design of cooling systems. B. Daily management of server performance and environmental conditions. C. Staff recruitment. D. Setting up client billing systems. 28. What is the function of a fire suppression system in a data center? A. To monitor energy consumption. B. To quickly extinguish fires and prevent damage to equipment. C. To ensure clean air circulation. D. To protect physical access points. 29. Which of the following is an effective method for mitigating electromagnetic interference, EMI, in a data center? A. Installing noise filters on electrical equipment. B. Using higher capacity power supplies. C. Increasing the number of air filters. D. Reducing server room temperatures. 30. Which of the following metrics is typically used to evaluate data center energy efficiency? A. PUEE, power usage effectiveness. B. MTTR, mean time to repair. C. SLA, service level agreement. D. RPO, recovery point objective. 31. What is the purpose of network segmentation in a data center? A. To create multiple backups of data. B. To improve data security and control access. C. To reduce power consumption. D. To prevent physical damage to servers. 32. In a multi-tenant data center, what should be prioritized to ensure tenant privacy? A. Transparent access policies. B. Segregation of tenant data and systems. C. High-speed internet connectivity. D. Optimized cooling systems. 33. 
what is the main risk of not implementing proper data center security protocols? A. Increased operational efficiency. B. Unauthorized access and data breaches. C. Lower energy costs. D. Increased cooling requirements. 34. What does ITIL stand for in data center management? A. Integrated Technology Information Layer. Information Technology Infrastructure Library. C. International Training in Infrastructure Logistics. D. Internal Technical Information Logic. 35. Which of the following would most effectively reduce the risk of server downtime? A. Frequent hardware upgrades. B. Scheduled preventive maintenance and redundancy. C. Larger server rooms. D. Increased number of staff members. 36. What does cold aisle containment in a data center improve? A. Cooling efficiency. B. Data storage capacity. C. Network speed. D. Server rack density. 37. What is the role of a service level agreement, SLA, in a data center? A. To ensure uptime and operational performance. B. To monitor cooling system performance. C. To restrict power usage. D. To manage employee work hours. 38. What is the purpose of a data center's fire detection system? A. To alert for smoke or heat. B. To monitor power usage. C. To optimize cooling systems. D. To check hardware performance. 39. What is a key feature of a Tier 4 data center? A. Single path for cooling and power. B. Fully redundant systems with multiple power and cooling pads. C. Basic infrastructure with minimal redundancy. D. No disaster recovery systems in place. 40. What is the purpose of load balancing in a data center? A. To distribute workloads across multiple servers for better performance. B. To manage physical space in the facility. C. To optimize cooling. D. To regulate power usage.